When I first saw the brand new stamp set by Teresa Mommer called Wild About You, I immediately thought how fun these images would look up against the wax paper background technique. So today on Stamp TV, I want to show you how to do this technique using household wax paper and the Tim Holtz Distress inks. Let me show you the tools and products you need to do this technique. First, you need some regular household wax paper, and you can use any brand. It doesn't matter. I have the Cut Right brand here. And then what I've done is I've trimmed it down to be just a little bit bigger than my card, my card panel. Then you're going to need some cardstock, and you can do this on colored cardstock too. But I'm going to use the Gina K Designs Pure Luxury Heavy Base Weight White. And I like using the heavy base weight because when you iron on cardstock, it can cause it to curl. And you get a little bit less curl with the 120 pound base weight because it's so heavy. And then I'm going to use two Tim Holtz Distress inks. I'm going to use the Antique Linen, and I'm going to use the Walnut Stain. And you're going to need an iron. And I just brought my iron from home. It's the only time I use my iron is when I'm stamping. So it's good that I have one. And I have this turned all the way up to high. I have no steam in it, no water in it, because I don't want any steam. So it's just a hot iron. So to begin, you're going to take that piece of wax paper and you're going to crumple it up. You want to crumple it up real well into a ball. Make sure it's got lots of crinkles in it and then gently open it back up again. You can see all those little crinkly areas. And if it's not crinkled enough, go ahead and crinkle it up some more. And then once you flatten it out, what you're going to do is you're going to put one piece of cardstock under it and one piece on top. And the reason why I do that is because why not make two panels at once? Even if you're only going to make one card, then you have an extra panel ready to go. Otherwise, the waxed paper from the other side is just going to stick to your scratch paper. So you might as well have two panels ready to go at once. And then make sure you're ironing on some scratch paper so you don't ruin your countertop or your desk. And if you're worried about it, you can take it over to your ironing board and do it there. So just check and make sure it's hot. And then I'm just going to iron it. You don't need to iron it for very long, just for a few seconds until you start to feel that it's a little bit, I don't know, melty. And don't worry about any of the wax sticking to your iron. If you have a newer iron, most of them have a Teflon finish and you can just wipe them down. Um, if you are worried about it, you may want to pick up an iron just for your crafting so that you don't transfer anything to your clothing. But I wouldn't know because I haven't ironed a piece of clothing in years. So I'm going to turn that off and peel these apart. Now you can't see anything on these pieces of cardstock, even when you're looking at it right up close in good lighting. But what you will notice is that it curls toward the area that you want to ink up. So if you happen to put these away, when you pull this back later, you'll know which side to ink up because it is a little bit curled. And that will all stick back down nice and tight once you use your tape to affix it to a card base. Okay, I'm going to start with the antique linen and you're going to do a direct to paper technique where you're rubbing right over the cardstock. And as I do this, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see the finished look of it and you'll be able to see it a lot more once the darker color gets on there. I'm just going to rub this antique linen all over the card. Can you see that pattern starting to emerge? Okay, now I'm going to pick up that walnut stain and I'm going to ink that up just in certain areas to let some of the lighter still shine through. go. A little bit light in there. Okay. And then I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and I'm going to rub away all of the excess ink. And when I do that, look at that wild pattern that you see. Isn't that so fun? Doesn't that just look like an animal print? That is so much fun. And isn't that easy? What a great look and so easy. Now let me show you the finished card project that I did using this type of background paper. Here I have 
a card using the new stamp set by Teresa Momber, Wild About You. And you can see up close there, that background is just perfect for this giraffe. It just feels so much like just a wild animal print. And all I did here was use a little bit of sweet corn cardstock as a card base with some chocolate brown and just mounted that piece of wax paper background onto some chocolate and that made my background panel. And then colored my giraffe using a soft yellow marker and just cut out different layers there and popped them all together and added a few brads just to make a little bit more of a masculine feel something that looks a little bit like hardware on there and this double stitched ribbon always looks masculine so you can use that on any masculine card i think this is just a fun card for a for a young teen boy or for any guy on your card making list Try mixing more than two colors to create more vibrant backgrounds or stick with a single color for a monochromatic look. Either way, you'll have a wild background for your Wild About You card projects.